welcome back to video c shikshana program here we are again continuing with the 18 erc 43 building services one what is supply and sanitation where we are dealing with the uh, uh, the second module and uh, in the second module today we are going to see as to how exactly the sewerage system and its conveyance systems are actually collecting all the sewage and treating it so for collection and treatment of sewage we all know that all our uh, sewage is coming out or exiting out of offices apartment houses and factories now from there there is a whole direction of flow that the sewage water takes so we are basically talking about that whole process through this particular class depending on the type of waste that we are leaving out there are two systems which are employed for collection conveyance and disposal one the conservancy system two the water carriage system conservancy system is also called as the dry system this is an old system in which various types of waste such as the night soil garbage etc are collected separately and they are collected in vessels or deposited in pools or pits and then removed periodically at least once in every 24 hours this is a manual system and since this has a lot of uh, manual carriage it's also called as the dry system the types of waste in the conservancy system is the night soil night soil or human excreta in latrines privies or even cesspools is collected separately in pans or pails and carried on the heads of the sweepers to a central place from where it is transported into the bullock carts or to the motor vans to a place away from its town for its final disposal normally night soil is buried into the ground in trenches to give excellent manure within one or two years the second is the garbage garbage is collected separately in dustbins and conveyed on land carts or even uh, motor vans once or twice a day garbage consists of waste matter of both non combustible as well as combustible therefore these two are sorted based on how it is dumped on a suitable method third is the sludge in the storm water sludge in storm water are collected and conveyed especially uh, separately both in terms of open system or closed gutters the disadvantages of this kind of a system are it is uh, considered to be disadvantages one with respect to its hygiene and sanitary aspects the conservancy system here is highly unhygienic and therefore causes a lot of insanitary conditions because of which the excreta starts decomposing within a few hours of its production second aspect is the transport aspect here the transportation of this night soil takes place in open carts through the streets therefore lot of crowded localities will be there in its way so this is highly undes undesirable because uh, there is a lot of uh, you know um, contact in terms of people as well as transportation here labor aspect the working of this particular system basically depends on the mercy of the laborer if the laborer or sweeper base goes for a strike even for one day for any reason whatsoever the previous or lavatories cannot be used because of the all the foul smell that comes out and the whole locality starts smelling very bad third the building design aspect the lavatories or previous are basically to be located outside the house and slightly away from the main building therefore since they are located outside a compact design is not very possible in terms of this kind of uh, soil system for the condition of drains here due to the carriage of sludge open drains are laid out when these open drains are laid out the conditions of the drains might not be very feasible or even uh, accessible so you have to be very considerate in terms of how exactly we are looking into the health aspect of the people around 
human aspect in the present day world when the man has progressed so much it's highly humiliating to ask a human being to transport a night soil in on pails on their heads also because of the careless disposal of the night soil there are more chances of outbreak of epidemics so risks of any epidemic coming in are also high the uh, liquid waste which comes out of the lavatories during their washing may soak into the ground thus also contaminating the soil so if the ground water is at a shallow depth it might also be polluted that's there's a lot of uh, you know waste water percolation which comes out because of which pollution might begin though the system is quite cheap in the beginning its maintenance and establishment costs are very high in terms of recurring expenditure the system requires considerable land for the disposal of sewage thus some kind of land requirements with respect to disposal are also supposed to be looked into the next system is the water carriage system this system the collection conveyance and displace, uh, disposal of the various types of waste are basically carried with the help of water now this is safer because here the water is used as a medium to convey all the waste from its point of production to the point of its treatment or final disposal sufficient quantity of water is required to be mixed with the waste so that dilution ratio is great and that the mixture might be flowy just like water here the advantages are since this is carried through water it's hygienically um, quite higher as well as with respect to the sanitary aspect also since there is no direct contact or direct exposure to the atmosphere there is no bad smell also because of the continuous flow with the help of water there are no chances of any outbreak of epidemics because flies and other insects do not have direct access to the sewage the liquid waste which are directly conveyed through the sewers are therefore having no changes in terms of being soaked with waste water in the ground thus they also might not contaminate the soil so there is no possibility of the ground water coming in touch with the sewage water the labor which is required for operation and maintenance is extremely small when compared to the previous uh, method because here labor is required only for pumping operations as well as if in case of any blockages then might be for clearing operations since latrines are flushed after every use excreta does not remain and there are no foul smells the latrines can therefore be attached to the living and the bedroom so it's very easy for us to work on a compact design here in terms of treatment aspect the system permits the use of modern methods of treatment of the sewerage which is collected through the sewers the treated waste water in the sewage can be easily disposed of without any kind of a risk because of the treatment facilities the land which is required for disposal of the treatment water is much smaller than that required for the conservancy system so land disposal also has no issues with respect to its overall requirement though the initial cost of installation is very high the running costs are small since manual labor is also reduced because of the running costs which are coming up lower this is one of the cost considerable method to the various classifications of water carriage systems are again divided into the following types a separate system where both the storm water as well as the sewage water is separated combined system where both are combined together and a partially separated system where in certain cases it's separated and as soon as the separation comes in contact with the, the storm water too a separate system basically provides two separate sewers the one is intended for conveyance of foul sewage only and the other for rain water including the surface washing from certain streets from public baths as well as foundations so they all come separately and then they actually have no connect to each other so the storm water runoff basically comes 
together as one pipeline until the end point there is no discharge during the dry weather here. But during the wet weather until the last point it comes and directly hits onto the flowing water. Otherwise the sanitary sewer which comes out of all the exits basically goes into a treatment plan and then it, when it gets treated and it is let out into the uh, river. A separate system is basically a very pre, uh, preferred system because uh, uh, the running costs are lower here and you can also see that all the you know waste basically gets segregated separately and then the storm water is segregated separately and it enters into the closest lake or even a water body directly without any connection with the storm water. During the dry weather, the separate sewer system would not have any kind of flow in this particular uh, drainage, but during the wet weather, there is a lot of water here. So, the flow to the drainage is uh, when it comes to the fill. So, what happens is there is a wall there. So, that wall opens up and when the wall opens up, the whole outfall of the storm sewer falls into any kind of a public waterway directly. The various factors which affect uh, the selection of separate system, one is financial aspects, two flat topography, the pattern of the rain, the outlet conditions, the pumping aspect, the subsoil conditions and developmental pattern. So, here we are basically talking about how exactly the social and economic considerations come together along with the geographical you know uh, geographical conditions of the uh, uh, town or the city at which we are going to lay out this particular system. The sewage from the first system of sewers can be led to the treatment works while the flow from the second system are discharged directly into the natural streams without any treatment. So, that is basically what a separate sewer system is. Advantages of a separate sewer system are the cost of installation are very low. So, the storm water can be disposed of through the open channels along the road sides only. Old sewers may also be suitably converted to carry all the rain water. The actual sewers carrying foul sewage much be, will be of much, a, much smaller size. The load on the treatment units is lowered since only foul sewage which is carried by the separate sewers needs to be treated. The wages on the separate system will be of more uniform character, so it will lend itself more easily to putrefication. There is no necessity of providing an automatic flash, flashing tank here during the dry weather because the flow in the sewer of a smaller section is much more efficient here. Sewers of smaller section can be easily ventilated than those of the larger section. So, you have to be very concerned in terms of ventilation here. The night flow is comparatively smaller which may facilitate operations at the outfall works. Rain water is discharged into the streams or rivers without any treatment. So, these are the advantages because all the rain water can be directly discharged into the uh, streams. All the night flow is comparatively sm smaller when compared to the outfall. So, you know you can provide smaller width uh, pipelines and smaller sections can be easily ventilated. So, it is very convenient for us to work on the construction cost also there. Whereas, this disadvantages are since the sewers are very small, it is very difficult to clean them. So, they might get choked. So, uh, while ch getting choked, cleaning and maintenance becomes very expensive. Since there is a likelihood of a lot of connections being wrongly made, confusions of the systems might also happen. Storm water sewers or drains come in use only during the rainy season. During the other part of the year, they may serve as dumping place for garbage and may get choked. That is what I was meaning to say, so only because there is no water flow there continuously throughout, the garbage gets collected during the non-rainy uh, season and because of the um, garbage being present there when the first rains happen, the pipes might get choked. Because of the lesser air contact also <coughs> foul smell may be there due to the sewage gas being formed. 
The next system is the combined system. Here, uh, this basically provides one sewer to carry both the foul sewage as well as the rainwater sewage. So, both of them come connect together and then enter into the treatment plant before being let out into the water body. This sewage as well as the rainwater are uh, carried onto the treatment plant before their final disposal. During the dry weather also and during the no, wet weather also the whole pipeline has continuous flow because the uh, storm water pipe as well as the rain water pipe are connected. But then what happens is during the dry weather there would be a dam okay, and this dam will only let out uh, water above its uh, levels during the rainy season because of which it is called as the outfall and that outfall might lead it into the uh, river body directly from there. Otherwise, the sewer is a little deeper, it flows deeper and then enters into the water treatment plant. So, this is how it is, there will be a wear wall uh, you know structure here and so this uh, wall structure basically opens up when the rainflow increases and because of it the overflow from the wall would enter into the outfall of into the river. What are the factors upon which we select this kind of a system? One restriction of space, two integrated development, three rainfall pattern, four the conversion of the existing drains and fifth are the pumping requirements. To again this is social economic as well as geographical considerations that we are looking at. So, the advantages of a combined sewage system is since this requires one set of sewers, the maintenance costs are reduced. The sewers are of a larger size, so there are no chances of choking and it is very easy to clean. The strength of the sewage is reduced by dilution. There is more air in the larger sewers than in the smaller sewers of the separate system. Hence, the sewer gas that may be formed also gets diluted because of the increased depth. Thus, the chances of foul smell are also reduced. Disadvantages of a combined sewage system is the construction of the cost is very high because of the large dimensions of sewers which are to be constructed at sufficient depth and to receive the sewage from the basement. Because of the large size of the sewers, their handling as well as transportation is super difficult. So, inclusion of storm water increases the load on the treatment plant and when the increase of load happens, the larger size sewers cannot handle it. So, that is when the handling of this pipeline becomes difficult. And the system is very uneconomical when the pumping is required for the lifting of sewage. The other disadvantages are during heavy rains the sewers may overflow and may thus create unhygienic conditions and also cause pollution problems. Storm water is unnecessarily polluted here. The large sewers get easily silted if not properly designed. They also become foul in dry weather when the rain water is not available. So, you have to be very considerate in terms of these sewers being you know properly designed according to the gradient. If the gradient is not given then it is going to be becoming very difficult because the silt keeps you know adding on to the pipeline and its base. When the silt keeps adding on during the dry weather, when the first rain comes in the silt is the first thing that flows and when the silt flows and if the pipeline is not properly designed then uh, the whole design of the uh, combined sewage system fails. Large sewers are more difficult to be ventilated than the smaller sewage sewers. Now, this is a combined system where both your rain water as well as your uh, sewer water join together and enter into one piping system. And a com separated is when both of them have separate pipelines, this would be of a smaller width and this would be of a larger width. And here since they are all combined, it is much larger to what it is in the previous case. A partially combined system is the third system, here only one set of underground sewers are laid. These sewers emit the fuel 
as well as uh, the early washings of the rains. As soon as the quantity of the storm water exceeds a certain limit that is prescribed by the laying of uh, pipeline, the storm water overflows and is thus collected and conveyed into the open drains to the natural streams. The sewers are of reasonable size, their cleaning is therefore not very difficult. They combine the advantage of both the separate as well as the combined systems. The storm water permits uh, which is permitted into the sewer eliminates lot of chances of choking, this, the sewers are completely cleaned during the rainy season. The problem of disposing of storm water from homes is also simplified. During the dry weather when there is no rain, the velocity of the flow is low. So, self cleansing velocity is also not achieved. This is one of the disadvantages of a partially combined system. The storm water increases the load on the treatment units because storm water also increases the cost of pumping. Now, this is one example of how you know um, all the night soil is carried onto the pails and then done manually. This, if you see right from history, we have been noticing how people would carry all the waste and then they would transport it with the vehicles or carts and then that would walk through the cities, through the localities which is very unhygienic to watch out for. So, this second system which came up that is the water carriage system came up and then this made it more disciplined, this made it very uh, you know. Um, discipline in terms of how exactly we are bringing forward all the waste. The wastewater segregation either it is partially separated or totally separated that can be totally negotiated in terms of laying down depending on the population of the town there. And there are various other programs which have also come up into as to how exactly when you know the waste comes out. So basically when all the waste comes out, there would also be an inlet for animal waste. So, all of them come together and a digester is where it gets collected. So, at least 1.2 to 1.6 meters square per person of uh, anaerobic digestion is uh, like a bucket which collects all the influent and then Mm, it mixes itself, all the digested sludge from this digester goes and collects itself into the collection tank. There is a vent pipe okay, and there is a gas outlet pipe from where biogas is also produced and this is removable cover in case of desludging and all if in case of maintenance we can just remove this and open it up for cleaning and maintenance. Now, this is one method. The second method of conveyance is basically when that is your commode, right? you have your seat cover and then a diversion. Like if there is urine, it diverts itself, if there is a pedestal, it, uh, this pedestal is basically for you to sit and use your um, uh, unit. So, there is an access cover here, the, uh, the man or person who basically comes here to clean during maintenance just opens the access cover and turns and removes all the compa uh, compostable material by hand. When this happens, all the urine is basically soaked away into another collection pot. The waste, the wet waste basically comes here and then the dry waste basically goes there. So, when that happens, there is a vent pipe also and then a fly screen. Because of the air and ventilation there, the whole space is also highly ventilated and safer to use. So, if we compare both the systems of severage, we see in a conservancy system, it is only initially that it is cheaper. Later on as the operation and maintenance works, it starts increasing in cost because of its recurring costs. Here the initial cost is low. Due to foul smells which come from the latrines, this is constructed away from your houses and com constructed as compact units. Whereas, since there is no foul smell here, all these uh, toilets can be constructed within the houses, within your living rooms or even closer to your bedrooms. 
because of this kind of a system the city appearance of the city aesthetics cannot be improved, but here good aesthetic appearance of the city can be obtained. For burial of excremental matter large area is required, here very less area is required in terms of the conservancy system which involves water. Here excreta is not removed immediately, hence is decomposition starts before the removal. Here excreta is removed immediately with the water, so no problem of foul smell. This system is fully dependent on human agency, so in case of any absence of people there might be danger in terms of insanitary conditions. Here since no human agency is involved, it is safer even when there are other urban issues. Now, when we say waste water, is our water really a waste water? So, you have to see worldwide majority of the waste water is not considered as waste water, but it is the water which is collected and then let out for treatment. This waste water is also a valuable resource for us because it is seen not as a burden, but this particular perception should be changed. So, all the waste water which comes from home cities and industries is collected all right, and, and it seeks its entrance into a water treatment plant. So, 80 percent of the global waste water is released into the environment without treatment, the other 20 percent is the one that we are talking about when it lets itself into the treatment facility. So, what happens in the treatment facility is there are two different phases in the treatment, the primary treatment and the secondary treatment. In the primary treatment, all the raw sewage first enters into the treatment plant, all the waste will be screened, the solid waste will be let out separately, then it enters into the community and then a grid chamber. The disposal of grit happens here and only the uh, primary clarifier basically takes in only the uh, upper layer of the water there. And then all the sludge which gets collected comes out as raw primary sludge and sludge goes for treatment and disposal there. From the primary clarifier it enters into an effluent uh, primary effluent and then from there begins the secondary treatment wherein we basically talk in terms of uh, chemical as well as biological treatments where it enters into aeration tanks and uh, aeration compressors and secondary clarifiers. When this happens that is when we add a disinfectant like chlorine or something and because of the secondary influent here, it is discharged into the surface water, but in case the water does not get treated here a tertiary treatment is also required. So, here we provide a return sludge pump, so the all the water does not return back into the system there. There is a video that I would like to show you all where we basically are showing you the whole process of wastewater and its treatment. So, I would like to acknowledge and thank YouTube for providing us such uh, uh, learning materials or resources from where we are also gaining information and also showing you as to how exactly the whole process of treatment happens. Every day, every hour, every minute, all over Moreton Bay and the Sunshine Coast, toilets are flushing, sinks are draining, washing machines are washing, showers are spraying and dishwashers are cleaning as our homes, schools and businesses use water and create sewage. Most of us make around 162 litres of sewage a day. 99% of sewage is just dirty water. The rest is made up of solids, chemicals, fats, nutrients, nasties and some items that should not be in the sewage network. That's a lot of poo! <laughs> oh, sewage isn't just poo. It's also anything you flush down the toilet or send down your sink and your drain. We're from Unity Water. Every day we safely remove and treat all sewage from your homes, schools and workplaces. Behind the scenes we're super busy and today you're coming along for the ride. We'll show you what we do and why it's so important. Did you know that no new water is ever made? 
The same water just keeps being used, cleaned and treated over and over and over again. That water in your drink bottle right now is actually as old as the earth itself. Before the world's population grew so much, and before there were all these houses and buildings, Mother Nature used to treat all the water through the natural water cycle. Rain would fall, water the world, then evaporate into clouds before eventually returning as rain or snow or sleet. But now we use so much water and it becomes so polluted that nature simply can't keep up. We now have the urban water cycle to give Mother Nature a hand. When it rains, the water is captured in huge dams. It's treated before it's ready for you to use. After you use the water, we pump the sewage away in underground pipes to be treated and cleaned at a sewage treatment plant before it is returned safely to the environment. Sewage treatment helps to keep us healthy and our waterways clean. It's a big job, but we are incredibly lucky. Right now, 2.5 billion people in the world don't even have access to a clean, safe toilet. And that means people get sick and the environment suffers too. Without proper treatment, sewage can significantly impact health and our environment. Thousands of children in developing countries still die every year from diseases caused from poor sanitation. In fact, the flush toilet has been rated as the greatest medical invention in the last 150 years. Here at Unity Water, we treat around 150 million litres of sewage every day. That's the same as 60 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Imagine what would happen if we didn't treat it and clean it. Where would it end up? What would it do to our environment and our health? Follow us to find out what happens when all that sewage leaves your sink or goes down your toilet. So, here goes. Pegs on noses, we're about to take a journey through the sewerage network. Off to Unity Water! When sewage is flushed or drained away from your house, it enters a huge maze of pipes that connect your house to the sewerage network. The sewerage network is all the pipes, pumps and treatment plants used to remove and treat the sewage. Just think, right now, under the ground, raw sewage is travelling to the sewage treatment plant. When the sewage arrives at the treatment plant, we screen it to remove all the unwanted objects. We find all sorts of strange things that shouldn't be there. Toys, false teeth, jewellery and even underpants. We also find lots of other items that cause big problems for the treatment plant. Things like baby wipes and cleaning wipes, nappies and fats and oils. Once all the sewage is screened, some treatment plants have special tanks that hold all the screened sewage and control how much sewage enters the treatment plant at any one time. This helps to ensure the quality of the treatment is always consistent. When the sewage is released from the holding tanks, the treatment process starts. Sewage treatment is one great big science project. It's a complex process and we can't do it alone. We need a bit of help from our friends, the friendly bacteria. <laughs> Fortunately, these happy, hungry guys love all the organic matter in the sewage that we want to get rid of. In fact, it's their favourite food. That's right. These guys eat all the carbon and reduce the amount of phosphorus and nitrogen in the sewage that can impact the health of our waterways. So we feed them in huge bioreactors filled with lots of oxygen. They can eat and breathe and have lots of hungry babies that eat more and more and more. When the nutrients have all been gobbled up, it's time to move the sewage onto special clarifiers that separate the solids from the water in the sewage. The solids are called sludge or biosolids. We drain them out, dry them out and send them off to help fertilise crops for animal food. Some of the friendly bacteria that are left get a little break, but then get sent straight back to work in the bioreactors for more gobbling. And the remaining water is our treated sewage. It's now called effluent, and it gets sent on to be cleaned and filtered again. By now, our treated sewage is looking pretty good, but we need to make sure it's ultra clean. 
So we filter it, then we disinfect it with ultraviolet rays or chlorine to reduce any hidden germs or nasties that might have snuck through. All the way through our treatment processes, the treated sewage is tested to make sure it meets strict rules. At the end of the process, the treated sewage is called effluent and it's been tested for quality more times than bottled water. Around 24 to 48 hours after the sewage arrived at the sewage treatment plant, it's been screened, broken down, eaten up by bugs, separated, filtered and disinfected. And tested and tested and tested. It's now clean, treated water, ready to continue on its journey through the urban water cycle. The process is complete, but the work is never done here at Unity Water. We all use water and we all make sewage every day. Run your tap, flush your toilet, clean your dishes, have a bath. When you're done, the process starts again. And our team at Unity Water will be there to protect you and the environment. Okay, once you understand the sewage treatment plant and as to how exactly it happens, all thanks to the uh, Unity video that you saw just now, we, we also saw as to what happens at the end product of sanitation. So, the system of sanitation and its cleansing is all a hygienic means of maintaining proper health as we all know and it also prevents a lot of human contact with hazards of waste. If we properly treat waste and also dispose the solids and waste separately. Now, what is happening if you look at the whole cycle of what is happening around in our environment is we get the rains. Okay, from the rains we have the two main sources of water, one is the ground water and the other is the surface water. The ground water percolates into the ground, the surface water gets collected as a reservoir, either enters into our whole system for uh, our usages, right, domestic, industrial as well as uh, in case of uh, oil and gas companies and th then from there comes all the waste water enters into the commercial reuse part and this is where we start considering that water to be fit for purpose for treatment. Once it gets treated, we again reuse for irrigation, we use it for potable water facility which again lets itself into the industrial cycle or we use it for agriculture for recharging the ground water or even for restoration of our environment. So, this is the whole cycle of how we have a conventional water usage as well as treatment right from the source to its discharge or the runoff. We see that the whole cycle is conveniently used with respect to our utilization. Now, if you look at the whole value chain of the sanitation uh, right from containment, we have a containment area from where it empties itself, transports the whole containment, goes into the treatment part and then gets reused for disposal or fit for you know fit for drinking or fit for re reuse is the next product which comes out. So, with this we actually see that the whole conveyance which starts from rain water from our sources of water to the uh, uh, usage of uh, sewage and how we actually convey all the sewage, then we bring out the water uh, and then you know segregate the water into uh, you know the partially covered system and the combined system and then from there it actually enters into the land and then we let it into the land, we let it grade into the land for around 1 or 2 years after which the same waste is utilized either for our irrigation purpose, agriculture purpose or even to uh, you know positively enrich the soil in, in our lands. So, with this we end this session, thank you so much.